Well, I thank you and His Grace the Duke thanks you <laughs> and uh, Oscar. Let's hurry because I've got some All notes right. here from my scrapbook. I want to be possible to pick up pick a tune and have you no, show right. us just uh, superficially, perhaps. Are you going to pick a tune that uh, I know? I'll let you pick the tune. Right. No, no, go yeah, ahead. Because uh, I might pick buttons and bows, or you know, who knows. Um, and, and if you could just show us some of this, what I think are called stylistic trademarks of other, other pianists. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we mean by the phrase, the stride piano of Art Tatum, for The example? stride piano of, of uh, Tatum or people of that era is, yeah. the, is the ability to play the background for yourself and make it work like a rhythm section. Mm -hmm. As opposed to when you play with the rhythm section, mm -hmm. where you would just hold a chord, usually, or punctuate with a chord and play. Because the drummer is playing and the bass player is playing. So this is where you go. Yeah. So the right hand is really the instrument and the left hand is putting the rhythm section out of work. That's right. That's yeah. the idea. Okay. <laughs> uh, what, what else did I put down here? Oh, yeah, here's something I wrote, um, uh, note of, that's, uh, talking about influences on you, and the, quote, the two-fingered percussiveness of Nat Cole. Oh. Could you show the two-fingered oh, well, percussiveness Yeah, Nat would do this sort of the thing. the TPC. each note has its own articulation rather than being an insipid phrase like yeah it's and he used mostly the front end of his hand and, and emphatic to like that, it was right? very emphatic sort of it was articulated uh, like you do in speech then on then the music running all yeah. notes together. <laughs> uh, that's part of the sentence the other part we they could hear in your early influence was the lyric octave work of earl garner Oh, they're talking about the full chords like this, where Errol used a handful of chords to play melody. If he was going to play uh, Getting Sentimental, he might play it like this. And delay it like that. You know? uh -huh. yeah. And as I said on uh, another show, you have to know how to be able to do the proper delay so it doesn't sound false. Since you didn't name the airline, you better not name the other show. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> <laughs> What was it um, uh, run by a middle-aged man with white hair? No. Oh, okay. Uh, what about the relaxed block chords, or would that be a typo for black chords? No, no. I guess not in George Shearing's case. <laughs> not in George Shearing's case. George Shearing used this kind of thing. To run melodies like Roses of Picketing. where he used the fullness of a sax section almost, instead of playing. Uh -huh. You get the full chord. Now, I'll play it again with partial chord. Partial chord would be two notes, for instance. Uh -huh. It's much sparse, much yeah. more sparse. This is yeah. full. You know, it just occurred to me that uh, I, I read so that you had given up singing because you sounded a little too much like a well-known singer. Don't say who it is. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> um, let's see. Could you do a little bit of a blossom fell and see if the audience can tell who you sound like? <laughs> I wish I could. Or uh, what's another Give me a kiss to build a dream on. No. Do you really sound like him? Well, it's debatable. You I'll won't do it? it? That way. I don't want to embarrass you. You don't embarrass me. I, I sing occasionally when I, you know, when I feel, you do. feel up to it. Could you do, sing just a bit and see if you sound like anybody? I'll be the what a day you do this has been, what a rare mood I'm in. Well, it's almost like being loved. And if you say Donna Summers, you're in deep trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and so are you. That's right. <laughs> no, I think everyone... <laughs> uh, I think everyone recognized the voice of the immortal George Burns. <laughs> Uh, let, let's not explain it. What are double-handed, or, or is it double-octave bass lines? Oh, I think there was, well, actually, what you mean double-octave uh, melody lines, Maybe. rather than bass lines. Maybe. Because if you play um, a linear invention, if you play, uh, as a game, on uh, Sweet Georgia, yeah. if you invent something as an alternative line, yeah. then you can play the same thing with two hands. Are they doing the identical thing, those yes. two hands? Right. Right. So you get, but you get 
get in two, mm -hmm. two different places in the piano, it gives a little different substance. This is a little difficult to do if you haven't been doing it. Was that ever hard for you, or when you were the oh, first yeah. time you tried that, could you do it? No, I couldn't do it the first time I tried it. Okay. Uh, what would I be hearing if the if the pianist was tonality based? I've seen that term thrown oh, around. Oh, you'd be hearing. All right, if you take the same tune, roses. Okay. Picardy, right? You'd hear this sort of thing. Melodies. You might hear a more involved harmonic like. to do. He's just moving the harmonies around and changing them to give it yeah. to a different shape to the tune. Well, thank you for this master lesson. Quickly, <laughs> two 10-second questions. How good a trumpet player was Louis Armstrong in terms of musicians' terms? Player. Fantastic trumpet player. Yeah. And the other one is, how long has wigs been a verb transitive, as in cigarette holder, <laughs> that wigs me, in the lyrics to Set and Doll? Well, you don't need to answer that. All right, we'll Oscar Peterson, it's a genuine thrill to have you here. Thank and you. if you would play us off, it would be... Uh, Wonderful. Just a little cocktail piano. <laughs> like that? Yeah. Thank you. Oscar Peterson.